Uh, good morning, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of Keeping an Eye on the Geopolitical Ball with me, Jamie Shea, Senior Fellow at Friends of Europe. Well, like me, I imagine you've been watching with horror uh, the TV pictures of the devastating earthquakes that struck last week, uh, Turkey and Syria. Uh, today, we learned that the death toll has already gone up to uh, 41,000. Uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of people have been made homeless and are in a very precarious position uh, with no roof over their heads. Uh, and we know that uh, recovery from uh, these uh, uh, dreadful uh, earthquakes in terms of reconstruction and so on, resettling people, uh, uh, will take uh, billions of dollars and drag on for years. Uh, but uh, the question I want to put today is, despite all of the horrors, uh, would there be some geopolitical opportunities uh, coming from the earthquake, which at least uh, could uh, give uh, the whole uh, story uh, a less negative ending? Um, and I see four. Uh, if diplomats and statesmen and stateswomen uh, can uh, move quickly enough to, to exploit them. Uh, the first one is in relations between Turkey and Greece, uh, traditional adversaries, a long history of antagonism uh, and disputes uh, in the Eastern Aegean, uh, uh, for instance, uh, over oil drilling rights, uh, uh, more recently the issue of uh, Turkey uh, 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 controlling its borders uh, in terms of illegal migration uh, heading towards uh, 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 Greece. Uh, they've been at loggerheads more often than they have been in harmony with each other. But uh, Greece was one of the first countries to offer aid uh, to Turkey in the form of uh, tents and, and blankets and medical teams and engineering teams. Uh, uh, and uh, the Greek foreign minister, Nicholas Dendius, was the first uh, 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 foreign minister uh, to visit uh, the Turkish government expresses sympathy and visit the earthquake zone. So Greece was one of the first countries to come out in support of an international donors conference, uh, which could begin to fund the $397 million that the UN Secretary General called for yesterday uh, for immediate humanitarian uh, uh, relief. So there is perhaps an opportunity here for Athens and Ankara uh, to reboot their relationship and get off on a, a better uh, footing as they move uh, ahead. Uh, the, the the second potential opportunity is Syria. Uh, the, the Syrian civil war has been devastating. Over half a million people have been killed. 15 million Syrians have been displaced by that conflict. Um, and uh, the remaining pocket of resistance uh, to the uh, Assad uh, regime uh, is uh, in Idlib, in the north, up near the Turkish, uh, up against the Turkish border, uh, which has been basically controlled by jihadists. Uh, now, uh, the uh, Syrians and the Russians have only allowed uh, one border crossing uh, in the past uh, between Turkey um, and uh, Syria, the Idlib province, for the delivery of urgent humanitarian aid. But, but yesterday, Syria made a major concession in the wake of the earthquake, which has struck Idlib uh, much more than other parts of Syria. Uh, Syria agreed to two more border crossings being opened up, at uh, Al-Rai and uh, Bab al-Salama, in addition to the uh, existing one at Bab al-Hawa. And the first trucks uh, rolled across those uh, borders, uh, delivering that urgent humanitarian aid, because, of course, there's been far less of it so far in Syria than what we've seen in, in Turkey. Yesterday, the United States also lifted some of the sanctions against Syria to facilitate the provision of humanitarian aid. Saudi Arabia flew its first humanitarian flight into the city of Aleppo, controlled by Damascus uh, for uh, several uh, years. Uh, so is there an opportunity now uh, to uh, help the dire humanitarian situation in, in Syria, which has been the case long before the earthquake struck because the Syrian army was literally laying siege to the four million people inside the Iblib uh, pocket. Uh, could this be followed up by diplomacy, for example, uh, uh, a more normalization of relations between Turkey and Syria? Uh, the two governments were speaking to each other and held a meeting at the level of defense ministers uh, before the uh, earthquake. Um, it, it's not certain. And of course, Assad uh, may decide that this is an opportunity for him to crush uh, Iblib because the hold of the jihadists uh, on the pocket may have been weakened by the uh, earthquake. Certainly, the international community will need to deter that. We don't need to go back to open warfare uh, in, in Syria. But as I've said, there is perhaps an opportunity now to have a dialogue, which even if it doesn't bring any kind of long-term peace settlement to Syria anytime soon, uh, at least can relieve uh, 
at the dire ongoing humanitarian situation. The uh, third area is Armenia. Again, Turkey and Armenia have had fraught relations. Uh, the border between the two countries has been closed since the 1990s, shortly after the collapse of the Soviet Union. Uh, the Turks have not appreciated the way in which Armenia has lobbied the international community to recognize the uh, Armenian genocide uh, committed uh, by Turkey, or at least the Ottoman Empire, in 1915. And the Armenians have not appreciated the way in which Turkey has supported uh, their rival, Azerbaijan, in the conflict over the enclave of Nagorno-Karabakh. But this week, for the first time in 35 years, uh, the Turks opened a border crossing with Armenia on the Aras River. Uh, the Turkish Red Crescent is working with the Armenians so that the Armenia can supply uh, its share of humanitarian aid uh, uh, to uh, uh, Turkey. Uh, this maybe can provide a momentum that was already started when the Armenian and Turkish leaders uh, met on the margins of the European political community uh, in uh, uh, Prague. Uh, last uh, autumn uh, as, as well. Could this be uh, the chance finally to establish diplomatic and commercial relations between Turkey and Armenia? The fourth area is in relations between Turkey and Sweden. Um, as you all know, dear viewers, that uh, Ankara has been holding up for months now the ratification of uh, uh, through its parliament of uh, Sweden's membership of NATO. Uh, this uh, is based on uh, Turkey's objections to uh, the way it perceives Sweden has been hosting uh, anti-Turkish uh, militants uh, on its territory, associated, for example, with the PKK party for some years, and allowing uh, what it considers to be anti-Turkey uh, demonstrations. But Sweden is currently the president of the European Union. It was also one of the first countries to offer humanitarian aid uh, to Ankara. Uh, its support in the EU is going to be vital for the long-term uh, funding um, uh, that Turkey is going to need if it's going to rebuild quickly, as President Erdogan uh, has promised as well. So is this too an opportunity for Sweden to sort of change its image vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, uh, Turkey at the present time uh, and uh, persuade uh, Ankara that it's really in its interest, uh, if it wants good relations with Europe and NATO, to allow the ratification process to move ahead swiftly, uh, particularly by the time of the NATO summit in Vilnius in July. Uh, well, uh, will uh, earthquake diplomacy work. Um, it's not certain. And we've been here before. For example, in 1999, Greece and Turkey also reached out to each other in, in the wake of Turkey's previous big earthquake in 1999. Uh, but it soon sort of fizzled out and it was back to antagonism as normal. So what are the conditions of success? Well, first of all, those countries offering aid to Turkey have got to stick with it over the long run and show that they're fully committed. Just as sending a few aid parcels in the hope of big geopolitical concessions isn't likely to work. Secondly, we, they, the, the, the countries reaching out to Turkey have got to have something concrete and doable in terms of what they hope to achieve immediately. A full normalization of relations is simply not going to happen. Uh, and for example, in the in the shape of Greek Greek Turkish relations, something sort of doable, like you know, confidence building measures on military exercises in the Aegean or, or delimitation of uh, oil and drilling rights, that's kind of be probably uh, more likely than resolving issues of territorial boundaries. So have a have a clear set of immediately workable objectives, and finally establish a long term roadmap for success, so that the rebooting of the relationship uh, can lead to a long-term normalization of relations. Uh, so I, I'm not sure that uh, uh, all of these things will happen, but the role of statesmen and politicians and diplomats is, is to look for opportunities, even the in the midst of the uh, greatest uh, disasters. Um, hope is just as important to, to the success of diplomacy as realism. Thank you for watching and listening as always. Look forward to engaging with you uh, this time next week.